now we're going to look at DeGuerre Bain's tenosynovitis um, of the thumb and some of the differentials for that. Um, so first of all, you can just do a simple palpation, or, or actually probably the first thing I do is get the patient to take and point their finger and show me where their pain typically is. And with the queer veins, you're expecting really sharp, startling pain when they um, grip or try to pick up something a certain way. And most of the time, those clients will show you exactly this region where that tendon sheaths are. So they'll, they'll show you, you know, that that they get the pain right in here. If they're showing you a more pinpoint area, that might be uh, a red flag for uh, CMCOA of, of the thumb if the pain were here. But you can palpate. The literature usually will say that you might see uh, swelling or redness here. I, I really don't usually see uh, any, any type of swelling. Uh, but you can palpate this area. You can also palpate the, the distal um, part of the muscle. And you can, especially someone thin like her, you, you can feel where the, the first and second dorsal compartment cross over each other here. And then you can palpate all the way down to those distal insertions of those tendons, okay? Then I would do like a little bit of um, resisted extension and abduction um, for the queer veins. So push against my fingers here, okay? And then push here so you could, um, and, and if a person had the queer veins, they might not be able to, to give you much um, against resistance at all, and, and you don't really need to have them give their maximum effort to decide that they might have some something going on there. Um, uh, you could also rule out um, a radial sensory nerve, so you could again do your tenels here in this area versus more of a palpation and a grind for OA. Uh, another test that's probably more helpful then the tenels for the sensory nerve is you palpate really firmly along the first and second metacarpal and the dorsal distal radius and it will be uh, an achy pain and, and sometimes it will be quite startlingly uh, achy or maybe even sharpish and it's something that the client would not have told you or they didn't really realize that it was it was achy until you palpated there. Um, you kind of want to be careful that you don't roll these two muscles because that'll give some discomfort, but um, but firm palpation along the first and second metacarpal and the dorsal distal radius is a, um, a sign for the sensory branch of the radial nerve. And so again, you're looking for achy pain, but it, it could be fairly startlingly sharp um, there. So then uh, finally, I'm gonna um, move towards my, my Finkelsteins, uh, Finkelsteins, excuse me. And then the, the, first, I'm just gonna see if the patient can assume the position. Uh, if they cannot assume the position or if they're really reluctant to do so, then I would go ahead and mark a positive Finkelsteins. You don't need to um, cause unnecessary pain. Um, then I would just see, you know, with your thumb like this, can you move your wrist, you know, or can you move your wrist down? And again, sometimes, you know, they'll assume the position, but they, they put the slack on it and they don't want to move their wrist down. Um, and I would, I would leave that uh, leave that be um, and, and mark that as positive. If, if it, by this point I'm still unsure what's going on, if, if it might be to queer veins or not, this is the probably the only occasion with the upper extremity exam where I really try to catch them off guard. And, uh, and I do just like that, just give a real quick snap on that to try to determine if it's, um, if it's a positive fecal stance that's really consistent with to queer veins. So with to queer veins, the client, with the exam, they're gonna have a really sharp, startling uh, type pain, and that's the kind of pain they should be reporting to you as well with their history, that when they uh, pick up things in a certain way or grasp things, that they get a really kind of breathtaking, uh, startling, sharp pain, and this happens over and over throughout the day. Uh, it lingers for weeks and months. It's not the kind of thing that comes and goes on different days.